Right. So as I look out today, I've had the pleasure for many years to be part of the CM faculty and stand in front of students each day. Believe me, it really is a pleasure. Over the years, we've discussed many topics, explored many themes. Today, a little bit different. I'll be talking about faith and manhood. As many of you know, you've heard the stories. I spend a lot of time in North Carolina, mostly on the beach. It's a good place to be. It's a good place to reflect. It's a good place to converse with God. It's a time of reflection and conversation. So first, the story of a fisherman. I'd never met him before. So I was walking the beach one day at sunrise. That's the best time, sunrise. Try not to miss it. You miss a lot when you miss sunrise. Maybe you miss all the sunrises. So think about it. This fisherman was a mountain man, a farmer, a farmer fisherman from West Virginia. And he was there with his three lines in the water, sand spike, a thermos, a folding chair, his two weeks a year away from the farm. And as I walked by the first morning that I saw him, he caught a large fish. Now remember, he's just surf fishing. It was a skate. That's like a devil ray. It was large. And I watched him take his needle nose pliers and remove the hook. I was kind of impressed. And then he said to me, you're going to have to stop every time you walk the beach with me because you brought me good luck. And I said, OK, how long are you here for? He said, two weeks. I said, we could do it. So that began a two-week conversation with this gentleman. Well, as luck would have it, the two weeks in the summer, they go by quickly. And we arrived at the last day. So we had our final conversation. Now, during the interim, he had related to me that his wife was back in the cottage. She was too ill to come down to the beach, suffering from COPD. The conversations also covered food, fishing, sports, health, all of the things people my age think about. So on this last day, he paid me a compliment. He said, it's nice to talk to someone who can carry on a conversation. I said, I appreciate that. Then I said to him, are you coming back next summer? He paused. He said, if the good Lord's willing, I'll be back. If not, I'll see you on the other side. Well, I'm looking forward to my reunion with him this summer. So let's hope the good Lord's willing. So that's my fisherman. So when you meet people in life, they can have an effect on you. Be open. Listen to people. There are good people out there. Next, the poet. So, here's something I'm a little more comfortable with. Yes, I really like poetry. So as men, sometimes we have stereotypes. So I'm going to mention the poet laureate of the United States in the 60s. This was James Dickey. Maybe you don't know him. Those in AP class will. He was poet laureate of the United States. That's quite an achievement, Poet Laureate. He was also a fighter pilot in World War II, 102 combat missions. He was an outstanding high hurdler. He played football at Clemson. Many of his poetry relates to the challenges of these events. So yes, you can be a poet and an athlete. They're, they're not exclusive. Don't lock yourself in. Be yourself. Shakespeare said it. 
to thine own self be true. You cannot be false to any other man. So, as I wrap up, a couple things to keep in mind. Find comfort in conversing with God. I do. I enjoy track, college football, college basketball, food, a lot of things. So look for things to enjoy. And as I close today, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Go Knights, and most of all, live Jesus in our hearts forever. Thank you.